Welcome to uh, yet another video on the logic and intuition behind deferred tax. Um, a fresh question, and um, this time one with which contains a bit of a twist. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, please keep watching and let's get solving. Lavish Enterprises reported 1.8 million in earnings before tax for the year ended 31st of December 2022, which includes 120,000 incurred to organize an exotic cruise for the company's top clients. Under local tax rules, Lavish is not allowed to include the expense in the calculation of income tax payable for the year. Apart from the cruise costs, there are no other differences between the financial reporting and tax treatment of the company's 2022 income and expense items. Corporate income tax is charged at 25%. What is the income tax expense reported by Lavish Enterprises in its 2022 income statement? Okay, just like before, I want to focus on the financial performance for the year 2022 of this company. So, writing this heading down, and just like before, I'm going to create a split into financial performance as measured um, in the income statement and the tax filing or the tax return. And there will obviously be a difference given the different treatment of those um, cruise expenses, cruise organization costs. Now, from an income tax pers sorry, income statement perspective, whether a certain expense is tax deductible or not doesn't really change the fact that you incurred it, so you have to report it within your income statement. So I'm going to say earnings before tax are 1 million. 800,000, so let's assume this is in thousands. And this obviously includes the deduction for 120,000 incurred in association with that cruise. However, from a tax return perspective, you can't include that 100,000, uh, 120,000 in the computation of your taxable income. So that's going to be 1,800,000 in unfortunately, plus 120,000 to give a 1,920,000 basis on which tax is going to be computed. Now, let's see what that gives. The tax rate we're given over here is 25%, so times 25%. Let me take my calculator from over here and do this computation. So 1920 times 25%, 480,000 of tax payable, 80. So this is tax payable or income tax payable. And you know the story. This gets taken to our income statement over to the tax expense line. Um, and it forms part, a component of the tax expense called current tax. So 480 enters over here. Good. Well, as you know from the previous four videos, we also have something called deferred tax. And so far, in the previous videos at least, I've been showing you that the effect of having deferred tax was such that at the end of the day, whatever came in as the tax expense was equal to charging the statutory tax rate 25% to uh, report the earnings before tax because because we had an effective tax rate always of 20 you know of I think in the previous questions 30% in this in this question we're deviating from the previous 30% to 25% but you know what I mean effective tax rate was the same as the statutory tax rate but that was the case in those previous videos because we were uh, that was the case because we were dealing with so-called temporary difference there was a temporary you know one year difference between when a certain expense was allowed for tax purposes and when it should have been reported in the financial statements in the in the very first video or the first two videos we had an interest expense 
which was allowed for tax purposes one year after it had been treated as a cost for financial reporting. And then in the subsequent video, we had the opposite scenario. Amortization was already recognized as a tax deductible expense, but we waited until the next year to do the same with it, to show it as an expense for financial reporting purposes. The difference was only temporary one year. In this case, we've got an expense of 120,000 associated with the organization of a cruise, which has been included here, left out of here, but this leaving out is not temporary, it's permanent. And in the case of permanent differences, there is no way this is going to reverse. And this argument of deferred tax playing a certain role in equating tax expense with, uh, or the effective tax rates with, with the statutory tax rate will not play out, will not hold. In fact, there are no deferred consequences of this. It's a temporary difference. So the tax expense is just going to stay at 480,000 and it's going to equal current tax. So I'm going to pick answer C over here as the correct one and say, okay, tax expense is uh, 480. And if we therefore compute the net profit, 1,800,000 minus a tax expense of effectively 480,000, we get 1,300,000. This is free. 120,000 apologies for this. This is 1320. That's a 2. Okay, over here. Now, that means the effective tax rate in the question, even though we're not asked for it, you know, let's, let's, let's compute it anyway, is definitely not 25%. It's 480, the reported tax expense related to earnings before tax, 1,800,000. Let's check what this is. Okay, I can see 26, roughly 0.7%. And as you can see, it is not the same as the statutory tax rate. And when um, the effective tax rate is indeed less than the statute or different than the uh, uh, statutory tax rate, it implies that the company is incurring uh, costs. Well, if it's higher than the statutory tax rate, it's implying it, it implies it's it's incurring certain expenses, certain costs, which are which cannot be treated as expenses for tax purposes. Uh, and this is something uh, companies often get grilled on by analysts uh, or grilled about by analysts because, you know, why is it that you're spending money on stuff which is not treated as a tax deductible expense? That's often to do with certain lavish expenses or maybe spending money without getting the requisite receipts, etc., documents, invoices, which would allow tax deductibility. Okay, so uh, let me now um, just write that, you know, just... A very, very quick little statement here. If we've got temporary differences, as was the case in previous questions, first deductible and then taxable, between the financial reporting and tax treatment of certain expenses, it's just a question of when the expense will become tax deductible in one period or another, then um, we have the appearance of deferred tax, both in the income statement, but also therefore in the uh, balance sheet, either as an asset or as a liability, depending on whether the difference is uh, deductible or taxable. And the effect of this is going to make sure that, it, at least in terms of that um, item, the effective tax rate will equal the statutory tax rate. Now, in reality, there are so many things happening in the real financial statement, in the income statement, so many things go into it that it's this doesn't necessarily happen or you don't necessarily see it, uh, or maybe you only see it in very simple enterprises. On the other hand, if the difference is of a permanent nature, as is the case here, a difference which will never reconcile, um, then uh, no deferred tax and therefore a mismatch between the effective tax rate and the statutory rate, they will not be the same as was shown here.